For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Are y'all there? Now, Paul is talking about that whenever you go from a known to a unknown, there's going to be a level of fear. Amen? Are y'all there? Whenever you go from a place of, because see, sometimes the comfort zone is comforting. You know, it's like I wake up today, and people say they want their life to change, but really they don't because they kind of like the predictable. Walking with God is not necessarily predictable. You might get in the season where you don't know what's going on. Say amen. And so, but those are some of the seasons that God will take us through because God's trying to break us from looking, from doing what man does. It's looking for a formula. Like how we go to school and read books and we think because we graduated in school and got a degree that we get a degree in God. But dealing with God is a ongoing, it's, it's ongoing schooling. You never graduate with God. You do go to next levels, but there's a deeper depth every time you get somewhere you say, where's well, another level? Say amen. Because we will try to master God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The, denomin the reason why we have so many denominations is because the men that started them thought they mastered God. They thought they had everything, they knew everything they needed to know about God. That's why you read some of these, some of these commentaries and some of these uh, 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 study books and stuff that men have written. It's like there couldn't be another interpretation of what they know. There couldn't, the scripture has to be what they said. So, they, so what they did was, is, they, is, is, is God may have given them a revelation and they made a monument out of it. They gathered people to the revelation, and they didn't move. And that's why we have Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostal. All of the men that started those denominations had a real revelation from God, but they stopped. Why? Because they were deceived to think that my piece of the pie is the whole pie. Therefore, we don't need nobody else. Say amen. Are y'all there? But they didn't know. It was just one door God was taking them through. Are you, is this too much? Say amen. It was just one place of blessing. Come on. You remember in the Bible when Jacob and Abraham and even Isaac did it, they would, they would go to places and all of a sudden they would experience God in a certain place and they say, well, let us build an altar, let us dig a well, and they would name that well or altar based upon the characteristic of God, what they saw about God. Say amen. Now they understood that this is one part of God. If I stay here, I'll only be worshiping this part of God. So they would go somewhere else and all of a sudden they would see God in a new light and they said, just like when Jacob left Laban, I mean left his mother and father and he went and laid his head upon a rock and the Bible says the heavens opened and Jacob got up and gave God a name for that. If he would have stayed there, that's all he would have known of God. Come on. So, but he kept moving. The more he moved, the more attributes he saw about God. This is the reason why people are shouting over what they heard when they first got saved, because they don't know God is nothing else. As a matter of fact, they'll get offended if you challenge their religion. If you challenge that what they know is not the whole loaf, they get offended. Say amen. Why? Because we've been doing this our whole life. Well, you've been stuck on one truth for your whole life. Say amen. African Americans have a tendency to get stuck on, on, on baptisms and salvation. Say amen. That's why if you ask an African American the majority of the time, say, what, what, what faith are you, Baptist? Why? Because we, we believe in baptism. That's basically all. And I believe in it too. Actually, we feel the baptism fool up here anyway. But I believe in it too, but that's where we get stuck at. We don't know there's deeper truths. Say amen. So then when somebody comes along and starts talking about the Holy Spirit, we ridicule it and say something wrong with people that are, they just too deep. No, that's just another revelation that they had to decide to walk through that door to get more of God. And every time God calls you up higher, you'll have to leave some people. Say amen. Are some of you all right now are paying a price to know what you know. Oh, that's a good word. And that's why I was shouting. People have no idea the price I had to pay to walk in this new level. People don't know you had to lose family members and had to cut off boyfriends and girlfriends. Say, man, you done lost jobs. People done hated on you. Your, your, your best friends say you're crazy. And you have to keep on walking because you see you, because you're really falling in love with him more than them. Say, man. So every level you go to, there's an, every door you go in, there's a decision. Now, salvation was one decision. 
as you walk with God, he'll always bring another. He'll confront you with another issue. Now, you're going to have to make a decision. Say amen. And it always will be, how much do you love me? Say amen. Do you love me enough to go to this, this next place? Well, Lord, I don't know. I, I, know, I don't know. I, I didn't know I would have to uh, be alone for a while. I didn't know. I didn't know I had to. You mean I have to really give victory over lust? You mean I? Say amen. You mean I really have to die to what I want? You mean I didn't know, I didn't know walking with you had to do with me losing what I wanted. I didn't know that. I thought I thought walk, I thought I added you to my life. Keep my stuff and add God. And that's what we're doing. Come on, y'all. That's what we're doing as Christians. We ain't giving up nothing. Say amen. And then we wonder why 10 years of serving God, we just as confused. Say amen. Having fulfilled purpose of destiny, because in order to really get, get really what God wants, you lose what you have. As a matter of fact, Paul says, I count everything I gain as dung, as nothing at all. Are y'all there? there? Now, I'm trying to talk to people who really want to make a real life change and really say, Lord, I want to stretch out on you. Say amen. Give you my all. Are y'all there? Okay, so we know that there is a door, but there's, say, many adversaries around the door. All right, let's turn here. Wait a minute. Amen. So if, 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 so that means that, listen, listen closely. Many of the adversaries, you won't see them until you see the door. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Are you, let, let me give y'all a scenario. If I was, football season coming up, if I was in the end zone, where they really coming up, but, but, but where they striking, they have a national fool over, might not have a season. I don't even care. They can make too much money anyway. But if I was, uh, if I was in my end zone and you punt the ball to me, amen, uh, it, when I took off, when y'all caught the ball, of course you're trying to defend and stop me, right? Y'all re ready? The person that kicked the ball to me, they uh, are not necessarily concerned because you're not close enough to score. But we are trying to get you. Say amen. Come on. But after I break a few tackles, the announcer says, oh, no, he made it to the 30, to the 40, to the, what's happening? The closer I get, the, 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 the more tenacious the defenders become. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? When I get, when, when I cross the 50-yard line, I'm in their territory. They're fighting harder to get at me. At this time, the kicker is involved. <laughs> you know the kicker never do nothing but he has to try to defend because I've broken through to the oh y'all ain't even hear what I'm trying to say I'm into the enemy's territory running towards the door now what's the enemy's territory come on y'all ready what's the enemy's territory it's the curse you lived under your whole life you starting to deal with it Come on, it's the curse of alcoholism, born a children out of wedlock these are curses, I don't want to talk about this Come on, it's a curse of abuse and pain and suffering. It's a curse of depression, living always defeated. Say amen. Now, you, that, that, now all that stuff, now see, he didn't have to do a lot to you because you was just on yes, your ground. You, just, you live in that stuff. Say amen. But when you decide to break out and, 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 and build some momentum and you start breaking tackles in the spirit, you cross that 50-yard line, he realizes, wait a minute. If they get all the way to the goal, they'll go through another door. And this warfare won't work no more. I have to go and find a new. And you know, the devil doesn't like to create new things, to do nothing new. He doesn't like to bring nothing new. If lust work, he'll work lust till you die. He don't like a new trial. You ain't figured that's why he come with the same thing every time. He don't, he don't, he don't want to do nothing new. But as you break through, he says, man, I got to go, listen, I got to go form another weapon. The weapon I formed last season, didn't. they broke through it. I had them stuck for a long time with it. 
Say amen. But they figured out how to get free of it. So now there's, oh God, now in the spirit realm, there is no longer a forest, there is a path. Even if they was to fall, they'll walk right out again because there's a path now. They know how to get out, y'all. They know how to get out. They have keys now to unlock oh, to unlock the bondage. That's only you'll only get those keys if you get to the if you get through this door. And it's so funny about people who have been oppressed for a long time that find a way out. When people that have really been oppressed a long time find a way out, they're not necessarily, they're happy they got out. But there's a, there's a, a, a what I call a righteous anger that rises up inside of them and says, because you had me, I'm going to open the door for, I'm going to hold the door open. <laughs> I'm going to hold the door open for others. Then you become, listen, oh God, then you become a lighthouse. You know the way to the door, oh you know the way to the door. And the enemy knows that anybody who gets around them will be able to get to this door based upon this person has the map how to get there. So I got to stop them from getting through the door. So the warfare becomes strongest as you get close to it. Many of you all are be right at the door and the warfare makes you turn back because you don't understand that it's only coming because I'm close. Say amen. This hell arose like a storm out of nowhere because I'm close. Uh, now I'm talking to y'all. Some of y'all got to catch this. I may not be talking to everybody, but I'm talking to some of y'all. Say amen. Are y'all there? So let's, let, let's go. Now go back over here. To what I say, First Chronicles chapter 14. Let's go there. Amen. First Chronicles chapter 14. This is how a lot of the teaching I do on Wednesday. If you don't come on Wednesday, you miss a whole lot because I don't I'm not as deep on Sunday as I am on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I can deal with some stuff. Say amen, because we have people who pressing, so people that press are saying, I want something hard, so say amen. On Sunday morning, it's a tradition, and they may not really want nothing, and I don't want to lose people, so, but, but, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to stop doing that. You're going to have to learn, that. I don't want you to be confused, but I'm, you got to press your way so you can know where we are. Say amen, because you don't know, you got a door in your life, you just don't know that God's trying to push you to a place. Say amen. Y'all there? Okay, look at, look at chapter 14. We're going to start at verse 8. Come on, say verse 8. I'm going to read this out in the Amplified. Can I read this out in the Amplified? Amen. Amplified is a good Bible. I know they got cats out there fighting against the Bible. Don't use nothing but the King James. Man, please. King James got issues too. You get a Bible you can read. You don't re gain, re what difference do it make what Bible if you don't understand it? don't make no difference. You might as well read the, read the, happy, read the Mad Magazine. <laughs> they ain't going to do you no good. Say amen. Are y'all there? Okay, look at verse 8. Y'all there? And that says, when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king, listen, they all went up to seek David. The Philistines, the enemy. When the enemy found out he was anointed to be the king, he came after the promise. David was not yet over Israel. They found out he was anointed. They found out God had given him a promise. The enemy came because of the promise. Come on. There would be no warfare. Just like when you was in sin, there was really no warfare. I'm telling y'all, y'all want to think the devil really had me. No, he didn't. Sin had you. Devil wasn't fighting you. Why he wasting time fighting people who he with? Who with him? Say amen. No need to fashion a weapon against people who already done fell. Your warfare started when you got saved. When you got saved, he started working on a weapon. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Say amen. Now the Bible says the weapon won't prosper, but it says he forms it. 